Dragon Ball Z Kakarot is the latest in the long entries of Dragon Ball Z titles. Although unlike many recent ones, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot takes a break from having online centric features to being a sole driven single player only title. It's a nice change up as CyberConnect 2, the developers behind the excellent Naruto Storm series, have finally given a chance at the Dragon Ball series and it certainly is a great one. Starting this review off, the story. The story of Dragon Ball Z Kakarot takes its course over the original 4 main series arc, then being Saiyan, Frieza, Cell, and the Buu Saga. It's a story that concluded its original run nearly 25 years ago and eventually spawned some spin-offs, retelling and multiple games to tell it. Honestly, if you played and watched everything related to the Z series, then there isn't a whole lot new in terms of major plot. Although this isn't to say that this is a bad thing. The campaign can stretch somewhere between 30 to 40 hours in length, and to my recollection, this would be the very first Dragon Ball Z game that actually took you through the entire series story without skipping major plot points or cutting into multiple games. Give me all you got. So to say the least, if you haven't played or watched anything related to Dragon Ball Z, Kaka would be an excellent place to start. As for what is new for old time fans, expect to see many of the non Saiyan Z warriors to be more fleshed out along with fan favorites such as Launch and many more to return. As for the gameplay, it feels very similar to that of the Xenoverse series. Combat is easy for anyone to pick up, yet as you progress through the campaign, the difficulty quickly ramps up to offer a great amount of challenge. As you progress through the story, there is also an upgrade system that players can continue to level up to gain stronger versions of attacks and new techniques. It isn't overly complicated and makes for a nice little power boost between arcs. A few complaints I did have, there was some odd input lag I was experiencing where my guarding and super attacks weren't responding until a few seconds later. I did ask another reviewer if he had been experiencing the same problem, in which they declined, so it could be an isolated issue, or me just being terrible at the game. I also wasn't a fan of the spam attacks bosses would do during their phases, as it would get annoying and at times felt like a cheap way to drag out fights. Outside of the standard fighting segments, we also have multiple large applications that we can freely explore to do activities such as clay dragon balls, training challenges, side quests, and time trials. The upgrade system mentioned earlier also runs off of collectibles known as Z-Orbs, which are gained from missions and are littered all over the map. I'd say it's one of my bigger complaints as I found myself not collecting them when freely exploring due to how annoying it can be to have to backtrack or break from the flow of travel. As for the presentation, while I feel Nervous Storm series offers better visuals, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot still looked pretty top notch. There are recreations of full cutscenes that I generally thought looked better than the actual show, while other times due to the lack of character movement and them having their backs turned against the player, it just looked off. I don't necessarily feel that CyberConnect put as much love as they did for the Storm series when it came to animating whole scenes, but then again, those games span across four tiles for all their arcs. Whereas here in it's all of Dragon Ball Z. I will say the big highlight is definitely the visuals behind Super Saiyan form, as I feel it is by far the best visual representation out of any of the games thus far. As for the soundtrack, I don't particularly remember a whole lot of the tracks presented in the game, but they're very similar to the original run of Dragon Ball Z Japanese, and even Dragon Ball Music. I will say, as far as I know, there isn't anything scored by Falconer in this game, which is a bit of a bummer if you grew up with that track. A minor complaint I do have is the constant repeating phrases characters were due. During combat it wasn't bad, but out in the open world where enemies would spam endlessly, the character, mostly go on, would constantly repeat the same line over and over. Again, a minor complaint. This also happened in cutscenes as well, which leads me to believe that the game was a bit rushed near the end of the development cycle. Bulma, let the others know what's going on, and then head back to Earth. Bulma, let the others know what's going on, then head back to Earth. Overall, I feel that Dragon Ball Z Kakarot is a step in the right direction for the series. While it does tell the tale that we have all known forever, there's a lot that went into making this game to offer an enjoyable experience. And the big bright side of things is, if Survivor Connect ever decides to do a sequel, we can at least look forward to them touching upon the Dragon Ball Super Series now that Z is out of the way. Regardless, if you are a big fan of the series or want a perfect place to start, then Dragon Ball Z Kakra is a definite buy. Easily being able to offer over 40 hours of story content and even more for side content, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot is an exceptional welcome title in the franchise. 